Good evening, guys. So, klaro lang, what do you see? Logic 101. All right, sige. So, we will be talking about logic. Guys, and I hope na uh, bilisan ko lang ito. We will just go through things. And hopefully, kung may time pa, we can do reading sessions sa uh, Philosophical Foundations for the Christian Worldview. Yun yung solid talaga, no? Na discussion. Pero we'll just go through logic uh, tonight. I really believe na logic is important for everything that we do. We have to think logically. And sa, as we study the Bible, get the meaning for God's message to us. As we fight temptations every day, we have to think logically. Kung meron tayong kausap na friend, who is depressed or sad, maybe that person is thinking illogically. And no? So, that's one uh, important sa ginagawa natin ngayon. Logic is everywhere. We use logic all the time. Uh, and the thing about logic is it has rules. No? And we, we, we oftentimes, uh, we sometimes break the rules. Tapos sometimes we, we follow the rules. Pero hindi lang natin alam, no? So hopefully, after this, we can think more logically and we can think more clearly after this session in how we read the Bible and how we interact, how we love God you know, with all of our minds. And I hope we can be fruitful tonight. Sabihin nyo lang kung chappy ako, guys, ha? You just chat or anything. Para tuloy-tuloy tayo tonight. So the first question is really, why study logic? Bakit ba natin ito kailangan gawin? And why do we need to do this? So, so Harold, for you, no wrong answers. No? Pero para sa'yo, Harold, why do we need to study logic? Um, basic defense siya para makabaluta if, um, if true or false ang ano, oh, muna. If something is true or false. Yes. Logic helps us know if something is true or if something is false. And that's super important sa atin mga Christians. Diba? We are called to seek the truth. Diba? And how do we search the truth? We use logic. That's how you know what is true and what is false. And that, you know, kung malaman mo if this is true, meron yung consequences. If you, if, you, if you believe in something that is false, meron din yung consequences. And it's important. Say for example, nung uh, Hitler, the dictator, no, when he commanded the German people to kill the millions of Jews, diba? he was sharing an idea. And the idea is that what they are doing is right. Dapat nila yung gawin na patayin nila yung mga Jews. Not sure kung ano talaga yung reason, pero what we can see is that si Hitler was sharing false ideas. And that, that those false ideas were believed by those Germans and that led to World War II and the killing of many innocent lives. Truth matters. Truth has consequences. If you believe in falsehood, you can go to hell. Diba? If you believe the truth, you can know God, experience Him, be a child of God. Truth has consequences. Now, we need to study logic dahil sa logic natin malalaman kung tama ba yung pinaniniwalaan natin or mali. Kung tama ba yung interpretation natin sa Bible, kung tama ba itong exegetical idea natin. And if what we are preaching and teaching and uh, the basis of our lives and our identity, is this true? Or are we living lives that are founded on falsehood? We know that through logic. So logic is, you, you know, basically, you, you use logic when you, you have statements like if then. Tayo ginagamit natin to all the time, no? Uh, hindi natin ginagamit talaga in this way, pero 
in our minds, ganito siya nakastructure. So if this is true, then this is also true. If A is true, no, if this idea is true, then B is also true. Ganun tayo mag-isip. No? And that's how we construct our thoughts. Say for example, lalapit sa akin si Harold. Ano? Uh, tapos, sasabihin ni Harold sa akin, Bro, bro! Obed! Kuya Obed! Ano man Harold? Sasabihin ni Harold, Alam mo, namatay na yung kapitbahay namin. So yun yung sinashare niya, namatay na yung kapitbahay nila. So, ako hala, namatay na yung kapitbahay nyo? So that means, magiging mayaman ka na. Okay, so nakikita nyo yung ano, it, it doesn't have to be like that yung conversation, pero you can see how if then was used there. If namatay yung neighbor ni, ni Harold, then ang conclusion ko is magiging mayaman na si Harold. So, so pa, nakikita mo, we are using, I'm, I'm using logic there in that kinokonek ko yung, yung, yung statement niya sa conclusion ko. If it's true na namatay na yung neighbor ni, ni Harold, then is it also true na magiging mayaman na siya? And you can apply that in all things. No? Like, for, like for example, if it's true na Jesus is the son of David, then Jesus is the rightful heir of the kingdom. Then if, again, if, Jesus is the son of David, then Jesus is king. Diba? Namamana niya yung kingship because of the line of David. And yun yung makikita mo sa Matthew chapter 1. You see a genealogy. Diba? David, the son of, the son of, the son of. And you can see there, ang point nun is that Jesus is from the line of David. He is the rightful heir. He is the true king. So maki makita mo dito na we use logic all the time. No? Uh, pwede mo nga sabihin, uy, may crush ba ya sa'yo si ano ba, random name. May crush sa'yo si Alexis. <laughs> may crush sa'yo si Ah, so kung may crush sa akin si Alexis, then my chance ako sa kanya. Oh, may mga ganun, no? Char-char lang. So you are trying to use logic in, in that. No? But is it true na kapag may crush sa'yo ang isang tao, does that automatically mean na may chance ka sa kanya? So there, there you can assess if something is true or not. So logic, we use premises. Premise, 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 and then we form a conclusion. So more on this later, no? pero you, you, we try to gather facts. And then from facts, we try to create conclusion. No? We gather data, observations, tapos sasabihin mo, ah, kaya pala. Uh, you're trying to make a conclusion. Sa mga exegesis sessions natin, we do that, di ba? Na, uh, ay, si, magsabi pa yun si Jomar, ah, oh, Kuya Obed, kasi ganito. Ah, oh, tinan mo, tinan mo. Ah, oh, tinan mo sa verse 7. Ah, uh, kaya, ah, uh, di ba? So, from those premises, you're trying to create a conclusion. We use this all the time. Pero you have to notice na tama ba yung premise number 1? Tama ba yung premise number 2? So kung tama itong premise number one, number two, does that automatically mean na your conclusion is also true? So more on that later. The so basic definitions first. We're so thankful for uh, Christian think tank ano, na for making things simple for us. So can you read this for us? Uh, Carl, pwede mo ba ito basahin lahat for us? Logic. So what's the definition? So logic is the study of the rules of argument and reasoning. So here, sinabi din dito na logic is the tool we use to create good arguments arguments. And a logically valid argument means the conclusion follows from the premises. And a logically sound argument means that all the premises are true. For example, here is the application of logic with illogically valid and logically sound. So, if we say logically valid, uh, ito sinasabi na sa premise one, all men are mortal. So, meaning, uh, si Kuya Obed na, 
So premise 2, sinasabi din na Socrates is a man. So yung conclusion, therefore Socrates is moral. Yes, thank you, Carl. So basically logic is the study of the rules of how we argue and how we reason. And it's the tools that we use to create good arguments. So masasabi mo na ar- yung argument mo is logically valid if the conclusion follows from the premises. If the premises are true, then the conclusion would also be true. It follows. Masasabi mo na valid. Masasabi mo na sound, no logically sound, if yung premises are true. So ito, this is an example of valid siya kasi the conclusion follows from the premises. At the same time, it's also sound because the premises are true. So look at the premises. Premise one, all men are mortal. Namamatay. So that's true. Diba? Premise two, Socrates is a man. Okay, that's also true. So makita mo, the premises here are sound. Masasabi mo na logically valid kasi if the premise one and premise two are true, then it will follow that conclusion should also be true. Kung tama na all men are mortal and tama na Socrates is a man, then it follows logically na Socrates is mortal. I think that's mortal, not moral. It logically follows. Kung lahat ng tao namamatay and si Socrates tao, therefore, si Socrates namamatay. Socrates is mortal. So this is an example of a logically valid kasi it follows. It's also sound kasi we can see that the premises are true. So pag gumagawa tayo guys ng argument, no, you're trying to to reason out. Like si Farah, no, sasabihin, Farah! Sabihan, sabihan siya ng nanay niya, Farah, bakit di ka naghugas ng plato? Ah, takot si Farah ngayon. Hanap siya ng reason, no? Ah, oh, wait lang. Ano, ah, uh, ma, ano kasi... nasira yung pinggan. Ah, oh, yun, yun. Premise one. Premise one na yun Farah. Nasira yung pinggan, ma. Kaya, tapos, marumi pa kamay ko. Ah, oh, premise two. Kaya, hindi ko hinugasan ng plato. Conclusion. No? Kabi talaga si Farah, galing talaga mag-reason out. Farah is trying to think logically. No? Sabi niya, premise one, nasira ang pinggan. Premise two, Marumi daw kamay niya. So, ang conclusion niya is wala siya nagugas ng plato. So, do you think na logically valid or logically sound yung argument ni Farah? Tanungin natin si Farah. So, Farah, do you think na you are thinking logically when you are talking to your mother in that situation? All right, thank you Farah. So tama si Farah no sa sinabi niya, hindi talaga siya nagathink logically in that statement. Bakit? Kasi parang parang hindi siya hindi totoo yung premises niya no. Parang uh, she is trying to make an excuse. So there, it's possible na na yun talaga ang nangyari no, pero makita mo na so what kung kung na na nabiak yung pinggan or na nadumihan yung kamay niya does it automatically follow na hindi mo huhugasan ng plato so hugasan mo pala yung mga hindi nabiak or hugasan mo pala yung kamay mo and then hugasan mo di ba so there we can already parang analyze statements whenever may mga debate sa Facebook alam mo yung mga ganun or sa Messenger or people are trying to reason out bakit mo nagawa yung kasalanan na yun ah kasi ganyan So you can already break it down. Ah, anong premise niya? Ah, anong conclusion niya? Does it really logically follow? So when you're doing research, trying to connect different data and observations, so makita, ma-break down mo siya to premises and conclusion, and it really helps. No? Kung makita mo, ah, logically sound ba yun? Tama, true ba? Or tama ba yung mga premises niya? Is it valid na kung this is true? Does it also follow na true din ito? So yeah. That's logic. Studying rules. So ang ang point ng talaga nun is that my rules. Okay, my rules. Whenever we try to reason out about something, my rules. So ano yung rules na yun? So that we can think more logically. 
So that is what we will find out. So let's first define na what is an argument. So pakibasa ng what is argument, Glenn K, the sister of Dan Hope. Sige, can you read this, Glenn K? What's an argument? Okay. Lahat ito. Parang pangit man audio mo, Glenn K, what's wrong with your earphones or your... Sige, iba na lang, iba na lang. We cannot, we cannot understand your language, Glenn K. I'm so sorry. CJ, CJ, pwede mo basahin, bro, itong argument, ito lahat. Sa kanya definition, argument. So what's the definition? Is a set of states, statements that serves as premises leading to a conclusion. An argument just is how we reason. Argument is making claims, supporting those claims with evidence, and then making a conclusion. Okay, thank you, CJ. So for example, suppose you tell a friend, I have to go to the grocery today. So your friend says, you cannot do that. Uh, it is Friday. So you reply, so what? Sabi ng friend mo, the grocery is closed on Friday. So what your friend has just done is provide an argument. Nagbigay siya ng reason kung bakit dapat hindi, siya, hindi ka mag-grocery. So you can break it down no, into premises and conclusion. And it looks like this. Premise one, if today is Friday, the, the grocery is closed. Premise two, today is Friday. Conclusion, therefore, the grocery is closed. Nakita niyo yun? Now you can break it down, yung statements, to see if the argument is true or if the argument is false. Kung Friday ngayon, then that means the grocery is closed. Premise two, Friday ngayon. So ang conclusion, closed yung grocery. Make sense, di ba? Okay. So you can also break this down and say, hmm, tama ba ang premise one? Tama ba na kung Friday ngayon, closed ang grocery? Kasi kung mali ito, then, di ba? Does it follow na, yung mag-follow ngayon yung conclusion, di ba? So kung premise one is false, na hindi closed ang grocery, then it would follow na mali na rin yung conclusion. If this is logically valid. Okay? Again, logically valid, the premises, uh, the conclusion follows from the premises. If the premises are true, then the conclusion should also be true. Pag logically sound, yung premises are true. And it's also valid. But anyway, dadaanan na natin to guys. We'll go, parang ihimay-himay natin to later as we go. Parang ano lang ito, parang overview muna. And lastly, we have a proposition. Yan. I like this. Sige, Lyndon, can you read this, bro? It's lahat, ha? Makita. Proposition. Yes. Yes, yeah, yes. Sir. Proposition. What's the definition? A statement or claim about reality. In philosophy, a proposition is any statement of affirmation or denial about something or a claim that something is true or that something is false. Sige, pakibasa ng ano, right, example. 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 The earth is round. The earth is not round. I affirm God exists. I deny that God exists. Christianity is true. Christianity is false. God exists. God does not exist. Each of these is a pro proposition. Okay, thank you. So basically... Proposition, you're trying to create a statement or a claim about what is real, what is true, diba? You're trying to say this is true or this is false, okay? That's a proposition. We do this all the time. Pero yun, again, my rules, okay? My rules in how you propose and how to make it more refined. So we will be using this book. Uh, very helpful, Shah, for me. First time ko ito na ba was like two years ago siguro. Tapos nagbigay ako ng parang short talk sa Christian Think Tank before. Nung active pa ako sa CTT. 
So si Kyle ang nag-recommend sa akin ng book na ito. Uh, I think nasa treasure chest na rin ito. And if you need a copy, this is a super, super short book. Pero I'll try to make it super, super shorter and more simple. Pero any questions so far? Okay lang ba? Discussion natin. Okay, we, we cannot understand you, Kay. Nay, na na siya yung chat sa chat box ko yan, na question. Wait lang, scrolling. Sound sa doon makaingon, logically sound siya. How can you say that it's logically sound? Ah. You can say na it's logically sound. Number one, the premises are true. So, dapat lahat ng premises mo, it's true. No? Tama. Number two, na masasabi mo na logically sound is that it's, it follows. If the premises are true, then the conclusion should also be true. Okay? Masasabi mo na sound yung argument mo or yung reason mo because uh, yung premises mo are true, all of your premises are true, then it is the the conclusion follows from the premises. Yeah. It's basically valid and the premises are true. Yung valid naman, masasabi mo na valid, wala kang pakialam. No? When you say logically valid, wala kang pakialam if your premises are true or not. Basta it follows. Yun ang, gust, yun ang emphasis ng valid. Yun lang talaga. Masabi mo, ah, your argument is valid. Kasi the, the premises, I mean, the, the conclusion follows from the premises. Doesn't matter kung tama yung premises mo or not. No, pag, ang valid, gusto niya lang talaga, it follows. Pero pag, pag sinabi mong logically sound, then dapat valid siya at the same time your premises are true. Example, yung parang invalid, no? invalid na argument na sabi na Glenn K is smart. Yeah. Glenn K is intelligent. Therefore, it's the end of the world. So yan, i i i nakikita mo na it's not valid. Diba? It's not valid. Anong connect? So sabi mo, diba? Anong connect sa katalinuhan ni Glenn K sa end of the world? Diba? It's not valid. So it can be true na matalino si Glenn K. It can be true na Glenn K is smart. And it can also be true na it's the end of the world. But it's not valid. Kasi if statement, if the premise is true, it does not auto automatically mean na the conclusion is also true. If Glenn K is smart, it does not automatically follow na it's the end of the world. Nakita niyo? It's not logical. It's not logically valid. Yun. So, dito pa, sabi pa ni Carl, it's logically valid if the premise, the premise can be true or false, pero the conclusion follows the premise. Pag logically sound naman, the premises are true and the conclusion all also follows from the premises. Yes. Masasabi mong invalid siya, Farah, if walang connect ano, or it does not follow. If the premises are true, tapos okay, true yung premise, pero it does not automatically follow na true din ang conclusion, dun mo masasabi na it's invalid. Okay? Masasabi mong valid na kung true siya, then dapat true din ang conclusion. Medyo... We'll, we'll go through that. Yes. Okay lang din yung masyado mo na mag-gets. Pero medyo abstract talaga siya. It took me time din para mag-gets ko ito. Pero once na mag-gets mo na ang logic, ngayon magamit mo na siya in trying to, hindi lang correct others, no? but also correct yourself. Correct your own thoughts and your own uh, ideas and how you reason out with yourself. Bakit mo gagawin yan? No? Is that really correct? Is that really true? Is that really the right thing to do? Yan ba ang kalooban ng Diyos? You can analyze your own decisions 
in your own thoughts by using logic. Yes. Wow, grabe talaga si Carl. Amazing. Logically invalid. <laughs> yeah. Walang connect or hindi hindi siya kung true ang premises, hindi magiging true ang conclusion. Bigyan kita ng ano, parang valid. Uh, if God is love, therefore, God loves you. Ganon. Is it uh, valid ba siya? Para sa inyo? If God is love, therefore, God loves you. So does it follow na kung kama, pagmamahal ang Diyos, mahal ka niya? So yan, makikita niya na yung uh, how logic is important. Or yung ginamit ko na example para mas ano siya mas clear uh, if god loves everyone therefore god loves you or god loves all humans is to carl is a human therefore god loves carl Okay, sige. Uh, bilisan ko lang ito ha. Um, since parang exposure lang talaga ang ginagawa ko ngayon, wala mo nang masyadong clarity na mangyari. Kasi logic is very abstract and it's quite hard. Pero I hope na ma-appreciate natin yung importance ng logic and thinking logically when we discuss. So again, this is from uh, yung Oxford Very Short Introductions to Logic. Na libro. Chapter 1 is validity. And follow up. Logic again is a study of what counts as good reason for what and why. And inference is yun na, yung, yung when you try to use if then na statements, you're trying to create an inference. It's basically a, a kind of reason. An inference. So here we see two inferences. So, first, in, uh, first inference is Rome is the capital of Italy. And this plane lands in Rome. So, the plane lands in Italy. Okay? Kita niyo yun? Rome is the capital of Italy and this plane lands in Rome. So, the plane lands in Italy. Number two, Moscow is the capital of the USA. So, you can't go to Moscow without going to the USA. So, let's break this out down. So, yung, yung statement na before the so, no, or before the therefore, same lang yan sila. So, therefore, then, yan. Yung statement na before sa so is what you call the premise. Okay? It gives reasons why the conclusion is true. Yung statement naman na after the so or after the therefore, after the then, so that is what you call the conclusion. And that is what the reason is there for. So, bigay ka ng premises kasi yung premises are the reasons kung bakit yung conclusion mo is tama. Yung conclusion mo is true. Logic is concerned if the conclusion flows from the premises and masasabi mo na the the argument no or the statement is valid if the conclusion follows the premises okay it is valid if the conclusion follows from the premises so ito maganda it na na example i think in ano eh, mabagaling internet namin pero magsasalita na lang ako para hindi sayang yung time so ito, first, number one ito ha, na hindi lang na kasama sa pag, ano, at So number one na is if the burglar had broken in, burglar is basically kawatan no, or magdanako. If the burglar had broken in through the kitchen, there would be footprints outside. But there are no footprints. So the burglar 
didn't break in through the kitchen window. Okay. That's an inference. Yeah. And makikita mo dito how logic no, can, can work. This statement is what we call a deductively valid inference. Yan. Pasok na tayo sa deductively valid. So, na matasabi mo siyang deductively valid because if the premises are true, then yung kung will also be true. And if the premise could not be true without the conclusion also being true. And it's completely conclusive. Yan. Talagang sure ka. No? Pag sinabi mong deductively valid, sure ka na kung tama yung premises mo, dapat tama din yung conclusion. So tira mo, kung nakapasok yung magdanakaw, dumaan siya sa kitchen window, dapat mayroong footprints diba? sa labas. Pero walang footprints. So, therefore, conclusion, hindi dumaan yung magdanakaw through the kitchen window. So that's a very deductively valid. Pwede ka maging sure. Okay? Yan ang deductive na reasoning. Very important ito. In when you bubble or with your friends, no? Or meron kang kaaway, <laughs> tapos you want, you want to analyze what went wrong. Deductive reasoning can really help. And so you can look at your premises and assess kung logical ba or tama ba yung mga premises. Next is inductively valid. So ito yung sa inference number two. Jones has nicotine stained fingers. Nicotine makuha mo yan sa sa ano sa sigarilyo. No? Mak ma pag linagay pag nagsigarilyo ka magkakaroon ng nicotine yung mga fingers. So Jones has nicotine stained fingers. So or therefore Jones is a smoker. So ito this is not deductively valid. This is what you call inductively valid. Okay, because it's not completely conclusive. Hindi mo pwedeng sabihin na if merong nicotine stained fingers, automatically smoker si Jones. Hindi. Bakit? Kasi pwedeng linagay, linagay niya lang yun, yung nicotine na yun. Pwede lang na siya lang yung naglagay nun. Siguro to pretend na smoker siya. So it does not automatically follow. No? Pero it's possible. Diba? Kaya sa tinatawag na inductively valid. Okay? Nag-gets ninyo? Medyo deeper pa ito na topic once you try to analyze Ano ang difference ng deductive reasoning pati inductive reasoning? Ang inductive kasi, you are trying to... Inductive reasoning, you are trying to collect facts. And then from those facts, you create a conclusion. How you make an exegetical idea? You try to collect words, diba? observations. Bakit ganito? And then from there, you create a conclusion. That's inductive reasoning. Ang problema kasi sa inductive reasoning, you cannot collect all the facts talaga. You cannot be totally sure na nakuha mo lahat ng facts. Kasi baka meron pa missing piece na hindi mo alam. And because we are human, and hindi talaga natin ma-exhaust lahat ng knowledge, you can all... Ang, ang nakita ko talaga sa inductive reasoning, hindi ka talaga pwede maging sure. You can just say, most probably, most likely. Ganun, ganun talaga ang inductive reasoning. And it's the same for us doctors. Kaya... Nahirapan din kami kasi we always use inductive reasoning in how we diagnose kung ano ba ang sakit ng pasyente. So for example, pumunta sa klinik ko si pumunta sa klinik ko si Harold. No? Tapos si Harold, nag-ubo. Bakit, bakit nag-ubo si Harold? Tapos si Harold, galing siya sa United States, sa US. Tapos si Harold, nahirapan na gina. Hala! Bakit nag bakit 'yan? No, tapos si Harold 
yung kapatid niya pala, COVID positive. Lo! Oh no! So, using inductive reasoning, ko collect ko ng facts, one, facts or premises, number one, may COVID positive yung kapatid niya. Number two, galing siya sa US. Number three, umuubo siya. Number four, nahirapan siya huminga. Anong conclusion ko? Possibly, most likely, may COVID si Harold. So, yun na. Paano na siya? RT-PCR, yung test to confirm kung meron ba talaga siyang COVID. Now, ang hirap sa inductive reason, you cannot really be 100% sure. Kasi, baka merong missing evidence na hindi ko alam. Or baka hindi talaga siya may COVID. Baka meron siyang pneumonia. Which is parang ganun naman ang manipulation. So, and other diseases. Kasi baka may facts pa ako na hindi alam. Pero sa inductive reasoning, you're trying to say, ha, huh, ano kaya most likely conclusion? Ano kaya most likely ang sakit ni Harold? Ano kaya most likely ang ibig sabihin ng verse na ito? Ano kaya most likely ang message ni Isaiah for the ancient Israelites? Ganun ang inductive reasoning. That's lang. It's not completely conclusive. Kasi nga, you cannot really collect all of the facts. Tapos gagawa ka ng conclusion. You try your best, no? Pero what if in the next year, meron new events and new facts? So iba siya sa deductive reasoning. Sa deductive, pwede ka maging sure. No? If the premises are true, dapat true din ang conclusion. And if the premises could not be true, dapat hindi din true ang conclusion. Ganon ang deductive. Kaya maganda yung mga kalam cosmological argument, di ba? Kasi they really use deductive. Pero pag iisa-isahin mo na yun, yung premises nila, gagamit ka pa rin ng inductive. Pero yun, makikita mo how, how it works. May difference ang deductive reasoning and deductive and inductive reasoning. Deductively valid, pati inductively valid. Ito, masaya yung tawagin natin si si Mel. Mel, are you there? Yes, Kuya. Okay. Can you read inference number three? Oh, Jones buys two packets of cigarettes a day. So someone left footprints outside the kitchen window. Okay. So, do you think this is deductively valid or inductively valid? Or unsa na siya? Okay. It's invalid. No? If it's true na bumibili siya ng two packets of cigarettes a day, is it also true? na merong nag-iwan ng footprint sa labas ng kitchen window, diba? it doesn't follow. So it's invalid. Okay? Even if it's true na si Jones bumibili siya ng two packets of cigarettes, kahit na totoo na merong talagang nag-iwan ng footprints sa labas ng kitchen window, it's not valid. It doesn't follow. Okay? All right. Simple as, yeah, it's inductively, ayan, it's, Invalid. There is no reason for the conclusion to be true, even if the premises are true. Okay? So what do you call a deductively valid? A deductively valid is all situations in which the premises are true, the conclusion is also true. Okay? Very useful itong deductively valid when you're trying to convince siguro atheists or you want to really be sure. Kasi in deductively valid, no, it's all situations in which the premises are true, the conclusion is also true. Or in other words, there is no situation in which the premises are true and the conclusion is not. Ayan. So it's very simple. Valid inference is one where the conclusion follows from the premises. Masasabi mong deductively valid uh, is one for which there is no situation 
in which all the premises are true, but the conclusion is not. All right. Sige. Yeah, tama itong kay Harold. Parang application din ba? Uh, always think inductively. Ang kagandahan lang, if you consult a doctor, there is the, the, the doctor is most likely mas tama kaysa sa iyo. Kasi pinag-aralan nila yan. And they are very sensitive to anong ibig sabihin ng signs and symptoms mo. So, it's possible na may cancer ka, pero statistically, and i-analyze mo, ano yung possibility na yun, di ba? Very low. Depende rin sa anong signs and symptoms mo, no? Yeah. Yes. Inductive is more on probability. Oh, grabe naman talaga ito sila. Sige, okay na kayo guys. Let's proceed to chapter 2. Yeah, madali pa ito actually. <laughs> Magmit lang kayo guys sa pag hindi kayo magsalita. Okay, sige. Let's go. So truth function. Ito maganda ito, masaya ito. Again, logic device you're trying to know, is this true or is this false? Tama ba ito or hindi? And uh, yeah. So these junctions are basically sentences na may or. Okay, tawag mo sa kanila disjunctions. May rules din for that. Kung may may or. Pa, ang disjuncts is the clauses na nasa either side sa or. Okay? Kung meron kang sentence na may or, yung nasa left nun, pati nasa right, those are called disjuncts. And merong rules. Once na merong mga statements with this, may rules. Okay? So ano yung rules? So what does it take for a disjunction, yung my either or na or my or na statement? What does it take for a disjunction to be true? So just one true disjunct. Kung meron kang isang disjunct na true, magiging true na yung whole statement. Okay? All right. So truth conditions for negation. Ito maganda ito. So meron ah. Yeah, let's say A is a, a still, ano, and neg negative A is, uh, it is not, parang ganun. You are trying to negate it. So let's say A is, Carl is handsome. Yeah. Let's say lang na A, ha, A, the letter A is, Carl is handsome. Yung negation nito, is ginagamit nila yung negative A. Yan. Ninalagyan nila ng negation of A. Or it is not the case that Carl is handsome. So, we can say Carl is not handsome. Yan. Pag negative A. No? Okay. So, negative A or the negation of A is true just if A is false. Okay? And the negation of A or negative A is false just if A is true. Okay? Lagyan natin. Lagyan natin ng, ng, ano, ng mga value. T for true, F for false. So the negation of A has the value T or true just if A is F or false. Or negative A has the value F just if A is true. So ang ano nito is I think the law of non-contradiction which basically is the philosophical foundations ba? Uh, a proposition or a claim or an idea or a sentence cannot be true and false 
in the same sense at the same time. Okay? A cannot be true and false in the same sense at the same time. Yun yung law of non-contradiction. So, masasabi mong negative A is true if A is false. And negative A is false if A is true. So, makikita mo dito, uh, itong... Yan. Nakikita niyo ba ito? Itong dinodrawing ko? Yung parang may V dyan. So, yung parang V na yan, that is for disjunction. Masasabi mong may V. Ang ibig sabihin ng V is or. Okay? A or B. Yan siya. So, A or B has the value T or true just if at least one of A and B has the value T. Okay? Masasabi mong true siya if isa sa kanila is true. And masasabi mo na false itong A or B, no? itong disjunction na statement, if both of them are false or have the value F. That makes sense, di ba? Kasi, let's say, um, disjunction ha yung may or, masasabi mo na true siya if kahit isa lang sa kanila, sa A or B, isang disjunct lang is true, automatically magiging true. So let's say for example, A equals, bigay kayo ng example, Carl is handsome. Tapos B is, Harold is a doctor. Yan. So ang A or B disjunct is, Carl is handsome or Harold is a doctor. Yan. Diba? A is Carl is handsome. B is Harold is a doctor. So if ang statement A or B, no, Carl is handsome or Harold is a doctor, kung isa lang sa kanila sa mga disjuncts is true, automatically true yung A or B. If Carl is handsome is true, th therefore, true na kaagad ang Carl is handsome or Harold is a doctor. The only way na maging false itong A or B na statement is that both of these disjuncts, both of these statements are false. That's the only time na magiging false itong statement na ito. Yeah, false na okay. <laughs> false ang both statements. Wow. Wow, thank you. Anyway, so ito yung ginagamit nila. They call it a truth table. And it's very helpful when you try to assess something is true or false. So let's say A, no, the statement A and B. Tapos dito makikita mo A or B. And ito yung mga possibilities. A and B can both be true. Uh, pwedeng true ang A pero false ang B, pwede rin false ang A, pero tr true ang B, pwede rin both sila false. So as you can see here, kung meron sa kanila true isa, in a disjunction ha, in an A or B na statement, automatically true. Diba? The only way na magiging false siya is if both the disjuncts are false. Okay. And the tricky thing about this is the situation determines the truth value of an inference or sentence. It depends. Anong situation ba? The situation will decide kung true ba ang A. In some situations, Harold is a doctor. In some situations, hindi doctor si Harold. It can be a situation in a dream, siguro, or it's a situation in the future. Or, di ba? The situation depends if something is true or false. Now, in logic, you try to assess if it follows. And in this junk, it follows kung both of them are false, magiging false. If isa sa kanila, true, then automatically true yung this junk. Get lang? That's how this junk work. Kung isa sa kanila true, automatically the disjunction A or B 
is true. Reko na simplify ha. Hindi ako magaling talaga dito pero I hope na naka-help. So when is this a disjunction valid? So it's valid if there is no situation where all the premises are true and the conclusion is false. Okay? Masasabi mo siyang valid siya kung walang sitwasyon na lahat ng premises mo true pero yung conclusion mo naging false. Dapat lahat ng premises mo na true, kung true man sila, dapat magiging true din ang conclusion. Hindi ko na-discuss itong vacuously valid. Mayroon siyang i-explain. Pero sige lang, next time. So the main ideas for chapter 2, and I really recommend you read the book. It's like super short. Pero uh, mas mag-gets nyo yung context nito. So in a situation where you have a unique truth value, true or false, is assigned to each relevant sentence, and negative of A is true just if A is false. Okay? A or B is true just if at least one of them is true. And yung ano pala, yung opposite, ay yung parang another, uh, yung partner ng, ng disjunction is conjunction, which is parang giskip ko na lang dito. Ito ang ano, the ampersand. Ito yung signal. This is what you call a conjunction. Con, conjunction. This is a disjunction. And conjunction is and. Okay? A and B. A and B. So kung sa disjunction or dapat at least one of them is true, automatically true na kaagad, Sa A and B, no, sa conjunction, dapat both of them are true para maging true yung statement. So balik natin yung uh, example kanina na, and try to apply it sa conjunction. Sorry. Yan. Gawin natin A and B. Conjunction na tayo, ha? Yan. So, pag titinan mo dito, dapat both Carl is handsome and Harold is a doctor, dapat both of them is true para maging true yung conjunction na A and B. So, kung isa sa kanila false, for example, false na Harold is a doctor, automatically, the statement, Carl is handsome and Harold is a doctor, is false. Dahil nga, conjunction ito. Yun yung rules. Dapat both of these statements are true. And I hope na kapag gagawa tayo ng parang Facebook post no, or Twitter post, tapos gagamit tayo ng or or mga and sa Bisaya, ug. Di ba? Sa ug. Uh, when we use these statements, maging careful tayo. Okay na na mag-joke, joke na ta, no? Pero once you, you start to become serious about the truth, tapos gagamit ka ng or, gagamit ka ng and, maging careful tayo na kapag nagamit ka ng and, God is love and God hates sinners. For example, ganun, di ba? God is love and God hates sinners. Dapat both of those statements mga conjuncts, no? kasi conjunction yun, there's an end. Dapat both of them are true for the whole statement to be true. Dapat it should be true na God is love and it should also be true na God hates sinners para yung whole statement mo maging true. Pero pag sinabi mong God is love or God hates sinners, yung statement na yun, it can be true. Even if isa lang doon, is true. Nakita niyo na yung importance? Conjuncts and disjuncts. If disjuncts or kahit isa lang sa kanila true, the statement automatically true. For conjuncts, conjunctions, yung my end, dapat both of them are true para yung whole statement mo true. Logical na tayo? <laughs> Any uh, nuggets nyo lang? 
Tanungin daw natin si ano. Si Ace. Ace, what can you say? Any thoughts lang? Any opinion so far sa pag-discuss na to? Ano kaya balik kaya what? Any thoughts lang? Any uh, any thing na uh, you want to share sa ato ang ano so far? Ang akong kwan kuya kay akong nasaptan kay Moto kaning sa balik ko sa atong law of non contradiction kuya nga uh, once ay delete tong isa nga once ang sa situation putan na to nga ang situation first is false and the other one is true automatic true na dayon siya and then kung both nila kay um false and then false na more to sa putan kay sakit na ako ulo kuya <laughs> okay so Uh, Carl, do you agree sa sinabi ni Ace? What can you say, Carl? Oh, agree talaga ako yan. Masakit din ulo ko. Pero, <laughs> yun, kuya, yeah, I agree. Okay. So, ma- ang makikita nyo lang talaga dito, my rules. Okay? Whenever you share a Facebook post or you try to say to someone, you know, an advice, tapos gagamit ka ng or or gagamit ka ng and, Uh, make sure na what you are trying to say is true. No? Kung end, dapat kung anong ilalagay mo doon na ano pang i-share mo na may end, dapat lahat ng yun true para yung sinasabi mo totoo. Kung gagamit ka ng or, okay lang na isa doon is, is true. Like for example, hala, na-perfect naman yung exam? Bakit niya na-perfect yung exam? Ah, either matalino lang talaga siya or nag-aral siya ng mabuti. ba? Diba? So this junk yun. So pwede, magiging tama yung, yung idea na yun, yung reason na yun, kung either tama yung it's true na, na matalino talaga siya or It's true na nag aral talaga siya ng mabuti. Hindi na kailangan na tama yung dalawa, no? Basta isa lang doon tama, okay na. Pero pag sinabi mong, hala, naka-perfect siya sa exam, ay dahil ano yan, dahil matalino siya at nag aral talaga siya ng mabuti. So you have to be sure, magiging true lang yun kung both of that are true. Talagang matalino siya and talagang nag aral siya ng mabuti. If What if matalino lang talaga siya? Hindi siya nag-aral for that exam. So, yung statement mo na yun is false. Bakit? Kasi nagamit ka and. And hindi talaga siya nag-aral. Pero matalino siya. So, yung first mo na conjunct is true. Pero yung second mo, hindi. Therefore, yung argument mo, yung reason mo is false. Mali ka. So nakita niyo yung importance ng or pati ng and. So yan, yun yung rules niya. Very helpful na gumawa nung parang ano, truth table, tawag nila para mas ma-arrange mo something is true or false. Yun. Now let's go to ito, mga names and quantifiers. Ito maganda ito and ito na makikita mo rin dito yung Facebook post na ay na sinare ko sa BTM treasure chest yung picture doon about di ba somebody, nobody, everybody. Dito mo yun maa-apply sa names and quantifiers. Yan. May alam ka na ba dito Harold? Baka you want to share something about names and quantifiers mga universals particulars ayan sila wala pa bro ah, wala pa maganda yung kay Mel yung merong merong sinare si Mel ah baka ma mo ito ma simplify sa atin Mel itong ano mga names and quantifiers pero mamaya na lang siguro <laughs> Pero last na ito guys, this is the last thing na i-share ko. Hindi na siguro tayo mag-leading sessions. Pero 
Yeah, it's something na maganda rin gawin in the future. So yeah, ready na kayo? Ready na mga brain cells? Or gusto niyo break mo na? Okay. Sige. So basically, ang names and quantifiers, magkaiba sila ng rules. Ano? Yun lang ang tingnan natin dito. So first things first, at the subject, yung mga sentence natin, usually may subject, may predicate. The subject is the center of the sentence and what the sentence is about. Tawag natin dun subject. The predicate, it describes the subject. Okay? Okay. Like for example, the statement, Lindon is ready. Okay, so ang subject dun is Lindon. The predicate is is ready. Now, the predicate basically describes the subject who is Lindon. So when is a sentence true? Okay. The sentence is true if the predicate, okay, yung nagdi-describe, the predicate is a true property of the subject. The predicate which describes the subject, it's really a property of the subject. Okay? So, let's say, Lyndon is ready. So, masasabi mo na, true yung sentence na yun, if talagang yung predicate, which is is ready, that's really a true property. Talagang ready talaga si Lyndon. If that predicate truly describes the subject. Now, ang, ang quantifiers is yan na yung they, they, they are called like that kasi parang may quantity. Diba? And these are the words nobody, somebody, everyone, someone, yan. something, everything, nothing. Those are quantifiers and my rules for that. Ang names naman is ito, yung mga, they are objects, di ba? Or specific objects or specific people, names, events. Yun ang mga names. And iba rin yung rules for that. So, let's start with names. Okay? And meron silang parang special na parang sim symbol. Like itong MH. Di ba? So, the subject, M, has the property H. Ganyan lang yung pagsulat nila. M is the subject, okay? Tapos H is the predicate. Okay? H describes M. Okay? So if M is, sino ba ang M natin? Si Lindon, di ba? H is, is ready. So we can say na H, the, na M, Lindon, is ready. Okay? So ganito yung ganito yung pag ano nila pag gamit ng mga logicians M H yan The H describes the M the predicate describes the subject Okay Iba yung pagsulat pag quantifiers pag quantifiers naman merong two types merong particular quantifier and merong universal quantifier. So, ang particular quantifier, it's some object. Okay? Some object. And the way they, they say, that they put it is some object X such that X is, describe something, no? X is happy. Okay? Some object X such that X is happy. So, ito yung some object X such that X is happy. Let's say H is happy. Some object X such, as, such that X is happy. So, ang particular quantifiers, let's say ito, you think in terms of sets. No, in terms of mga set. And in a set, meron kang objects. Okay? Object A. Object B, object C. Diba? Yan ang mga particular quantifiers is you are, you are trying to, to think of this particular object. Anyan. 
So for example, ito silang tatlo. Yan. Ito silang tatlo. Yan. Uh, when you're thinking in terms of particular, okay, quantifiers, some object, you're thinking ito in a given parang set of objects, ito lang sila tatlo. Okay? Or ito lang siya isa. Or ito silang lima. Yan. So some object X such that X is happy. Ganyan, ganyan sila. Ganito yung parang notation na ginagamit. Kapag ano naman, universal quantifier, ang ano sa universal quantifier is every. Okay, lahat. Okay, lahat. Every object. And it's true in the situation where every object in the relevant collection is happy or every object is being described as happy. And ang pagsulat is parang ganito. Okay? Yung parang, parang ganito. That is for universal quantifiers. I think every object ito, every object X such that X is happy. Or in other, pag sa English pa, everyone is happy. So, magkaiba rin yung rules nila. So kung ang particular quantifier is ito, 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 tapos just one or two of them, sa ano naman, sa for particular yung kanina, no? Sorry. For particular quantifier, sa universal naman, dapat lahat sila. Okay? Every object na in the relevant collection dapat i-involve mo. Kung merong isa dito na hindi true, no, hindi siya part of the collection, like hindi siya tama, like for example, ito siya is uh, hindi siya happy, therefore false na kapag ka ng universal quantifier like every every object, every human. Kapag may isa lang dyan or dalawa no, na, na hindi na tayo, the, the whole sentence is false na. Let's say for example ito, parati ko ito naririnig. Lahat ng lalaki manloloko. Is that true? Lahat ba ng lalaki manloloko? Yan. May so, okay. Pero... That's inductive. <laughs> so, lahat ba ng lalaki manloloko? So, so, that statement is, that's what you call a universal quantifier. ba? So, kung at least may isa lang na lalaki na hindi manloloko, that statement is already false. Okay? Pero pag sinabi mo ganito, may mga lalaki na manloloko. Okay? May mga lalaki na manloloko. So that is ano, that is a particular quantifier. You are saying that some object, some some man may lalaki somewhere in the relevant collection in the population of all men may isang lalaki na manloloko automatically that is true okay pag sinabi mo may lalaki or may ibang lalaki na manloloko if there is one or some object automatically that's true get sila so that's the power of particular quantifiers and universal quantifiers. Kaya mag-ingat tayo sa mga when we use lahat ganyan, or wala. So diyan napapasok yung yung kay ano rin yung kay kay Mel. I-share screen ko na lang yun Mel kasi parang helpful talaga yun yung
No question so far? Okay lang? Yung gusto ko lang naman talaga na mangyari is parang maging careful tayo no in how we use itong mga statements, mga words na may or, and, every, some, nobody. Like for example, nobody loves me. Di ba? Naririnig natin yan all the time sa mga sad boy. Nobody loves me. So just because hindi ka mahal ng girlfriend mo no or yung nakipag-break sa iyo does not mean na no one loves you. Kung meron lang isa na nagmahal sa iyo, automatically false na 'yon, 'di ba? Kasi sabi mo nobody loves me. So what if mahal ka ng Diyos? So automatically that statement nobody loves me is already false galing na yun kay satan siguro no because satan is the father of lies the father of falsehood automatically statement becomes false kasi nga uh, the negation of particular yeah pero hindi ko na lang i-explain yung ano medyo technical siya pero pero na gets niyo yung point no So Mel, can you explain this to us? Mel, try mo lang i-share. Uh, you don't have to be ano, pressured how to teach. Just share what you know about this. Try mo na learn. Hello, guys. Good evening. <laughs> Wait lang, kuya. Nasyok ko kay... Wait lang, kuya. Ah, uh, so yun there's a, like I, I I don't know about you guys but sa home case I just found out just recently the difference between <coughs> contrary and contradictory like mura man good interchangeable na terms because not only um do they sound alike but also mura dili kay clear ang definition sa duha so mura I can I come I came across this book and then kanina chapter and then nagtalk siya about contrary versus contradictory and na mind blown ko kay ha huh, there's the difference there's this difference the i so yun um so when we say uh una i review mo natin universal and particular so universal like all encompassing siya murag walay exception and particular maybe some or um some or just like one in that all you name know, particular so by um understanding the difference between the two mas makasabot pud ta sa difference sa contradictory or contrary so sa contrary uh, contradictory the i sa contradictory of example um, so many dot na example All BTM members are um, college students. Dayon, mo enter dayon ka na some BTM member, uh, BTM girl members are high school. So contradictory na siya because um. Paano ko ba to explain? Di ako marunong mag-explain. Ah. <laughs> uh, ano ba hindi sila hindi sila nag tawag ani <laughs> uh... okay lang yan Mel uh, we get you no parang ewan ko lang parang part lang talaga ng BTM culture mag shock <laughs> para pang pagising lang ba pero yeah, maganda yung example na giving up ni Mel, no? Na uh, thank you for that. Ang ang difference between contradictory pati contrary is that sa contradictory both statements are 
ay magkaiba pala, sorry, sa contradictory, yung isang statement universal, yung isang statement particular. Yan. Yung isang statement all, yung isang statement some. Tapos, mag, 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 magiging contradictory siya if they, uh, contra, if they, paano ba i-explain? Parang, one goes against the other. So, for example, uh, ito, I think yung, yung example niya. Oh. So, no one in this family Yan. Yan. So makikita mo dito yung isa universal, yung isa particular. So sabi niya, no one in this family helps out. So that's universal. Sabi niya, wala. Wala talagang tumutulong. Tapos sabi nung ano, nung isa, some of us help that's particular, di ba? So that's a contradiction. Or tinatry niya i-contradict. Siguro yung, yung parent niya dito or yung kapatid niya. Kasi nga, uh, di ba? Sabi niya, wala. That's universal. Out of all the family members in the set, wala talagang tumutulong daw. Pero sabi ng isa na meron. So that's contradictory. Pero masasabi mong contrary if yung isa universal, yung isa universal. Okay? Like for example, ito. No one in this family helps out. That's universal. Lahat. Hindi tumutulong. Sabi ng isa, we all help out. So that is contrary. Ang, ang tingnan mo ito, significance ito, is that sa contradictory, hindi pwedeng, hindi pwedeng, yung is, uh, hindi pwedeng both of them are true. Hindi rin pwedeng both of them are false. Dapat, dapat talaga, pag contradictory ha, dapat talaga, kapag contradictory, yung isa true, yung isa false. Okay? Dapat yung isa true, yung isa false. Okay? Balik ko. Pag contradictory, yung isa universal, yung isa particular, dapat talaga yung isa true, tapos yung isa false. Hindi pwedeng both of them are true. Hindi pwedeng walang tumutulong sa family. At the same time, meron. Okay? That's condition. Hindi rin pwedeng false ang dalawa. Hindi pwede mali na no one helps. Hindi rin pwede mali din na merong tumutulong. Okay? Nakita niya? They cannot be both true and cannot be both false. Dapat meron talagang isang true, may isang false. Sa contrary naman, contrary. Sa contrary naman, Ganda ng penmanship ko, no? <laughs> sa contrary naman, di ba? Both universal. Di ba? Universal, universal. Sa contrary naman, hindi pwedeng both true. They cannot be both true. Pag tignan mo dito sa example natin, sa contrary, hindi pwedeng no one helps in the family at the same time, lahat tumutulong sa family. Di ba? They are contrary. They cannot be both true. Hindi pwedeng true na walang tumutulong at the same time, lahat tumutulong. But, the thing about contrary is, they can be both false. Yeah. 
Ayan. Ganyan siya lang? Yan. Okay? Contradictory cannot be both true, cannot be both false. Pero pag contrary, pwedeng, ay hindi pwedeng both of them are true, pero pwedeng both are false. And maintindihan mo kung bakit pwedeng both false. Dahil universal na. Kasi universal. Pag sinabi mo kasing universal, lahat talaga tumutulong. Sure ka? Lahat talaga tumutulong. Diba? Diba? Ganda, no? Na-appreciate nyo? The difference between contradictory and contrary depends upon yung mga universals and particulars. So yun, I hope na maging careful tayo when we use lahat. Yung sana all. <laughs> sana lahat. No? Sana all. Are you sure? Dap sana lahat ganun? Sana lahat mayaman. What if lahat naging mayaman? Do you think everybody would be happy? So, yun mga every, everyone. Kaya ako, ako pag nag-teach ko, mas mahilig ako sa words na sometimes, di ba? Pag mag-preach tayo, sometimes we we forget God. Natanakot ako pag mga, mga tao nag-preach na Every time we forget God. Like, always we forget God. So mag ha, always ba talaga natin nakakalimutan si God? Or sometimes nakakalimutan natin si God? So nakikita nyo na yung relevance. When you say God is always good, God is good every time, what means? Or that person is always bad. Is that true? Or that person is sometimes bad? Or some, that person... Uh, everything that that person does is beautiful. Everything she does is right. <laughs> Alam mo yun? Saan kanta yan? Everything she does is beautiful. Everything she does is right. Because uh, it's you and me and all other people. Uh, nothing to do, nothing to prove. Diba? <laughs> Tama ba lyrics ko? <laughs> so makita niyo, diba, na, na these statements can be true or false and they can contradict each other. Ang key natin, guys, when we interpret the Bible, when we share the word, is we do not contradict ourselves. Okay. So we have to be careful when we use these terms. Some, sometimes. Yan. Tapos kapag inductive reasoning kayo guys, ako, I really love the word perhaps. Sa Bisaya, basin. No? When somebody is struggling, nag-depressed siya, ganaan siya maghikog, tapos hinginan pag hinato, ay tungod na kay, wala manggod kay pagtuo sa ginoo. Ah. Wala manggod kay faith. Ah. Wala mong kagabasag Bible. Ah! Di ba? Hindi ka kasi nagbabasa. So parang you're being ano kaagad na yan yung reason. So wait lang. Inductive tayo. no? So pag inductive, sure. so we use the word perhaps. Perhaps, basin ano, hindi ka naka-devotional today. Basin, ano, basin you are troubled about. Di ba? So I think it's very therapeutic. Yung mga psychologist ko na mga counselors na nilapitan, they always use that term. Kasi, baka siguro, ano, siguro nahihirapan ka. And it really helps kasi parang makes you, I think it's really more closer to the truth. Kasi, inductive eh. You're not really sure na yun talaga ang reason kung bakit siya nahihirapan. So yan, just to apply, no, uh, in real life yung 
inductive reasoning din natin kanina. Unless you're really sure, no, na yun talaga ang reason kung bakit yun ang pinagdadaanan niya. O bakit nabagsak? Ay, dahil hindi ka nag-aral. Wait, wait, wait! Mas maganda, baka dahil hindi ka nag-aral. Ha? Kasi hindi ka nag-aral. Wait, wait, wait! Kasi merong mga times na nag-aral ka talaga pero nabagsak ka pa rin. ba? Diba? There are those times. Meron ding times na hindi ka nag-aral pero perfect or pasado. So you you cannot say that ka agad. Okay? Inductive tayo, inductive. We cannot be sure. You don't have all the facts. You don't have all the evidence. So, yes. So, yan yung, yan yung kagandahan ng logic, guys. Yeah, Mel is always perfect. Wow. Yeah. What a universal. Okay, tapusin na lang natin ito, guys. Uh, I think we're almost done. Okay. So, yun yung universal standard and particular quantifier. And as you can see, iba yung rules for, for names and quantifiers. So, um, hindi ko na lang siguro daanan yung iba. Kaya na bahala. So, ang, ang sa names, it's true if the predicate describes the subject. Okay? The, the predicate has the, the, the property na meron talaga dun sa subject. If si Lindon really is ready, that's when it becomes true. Pero kapag ano man, sa quantifiers, iba. Iba yung, iba yung rules. You cannot say nobody is ready. Tapos you try to apply the, the same rules as if nobody is a person or nobody is a subject na in the same sense na nobody is like a person or nobody is an object, a, an event. Hindi, iba yung rules kapag sinabi mo nobody is perfect. Mag-iiba yung pagsulat mo and mag-iiba din yung rules. It's only true na nobody is perfect if in a given set, meron kayong objects, talagang wala doon perfect. Okay? That's the rules for universals. Dapat wala talaga kahit na isa. Kung may isa doon, perfect, automatically false yung statement na nobody is perfect. It's a universal quantifier. Yeah, we made this. So for names, the sentence N is true in a situation if the object referred to by N has the property expressed by P in that situation. Tapos itong uh, some object X, tama ba? Yan, some object X is such that X is P is true in a situation just if some object in the situation X is such that X is P. So parang magiging true lang itong particular quantifier, itong sum, no, sum, S-O-M-E na sum, if merong doong object that that is that expresses the property na dinidescribe mo doon. And ito namang universal quantifier, every object X is that X is P is true if every object in the situation X is such that X is P. Every doon na object doon or every uh, yeah, every object doon sa set mo is be is truly being described by P. Kung ano man yung isain mo doon na property. Yeah. Pero we're, we're becoming very abstract, no? Pero I think na-gets yun naman ang point sa dito sa quantifiers and names. And yung point lang talaga dito, names, ibang rules. Quantifiers, ibang rules. Okay? And we need to stick to the rules para hindi natin makontradict ang ating sarili. And that's it. Yeah. 
I think, uh, yeah, that's logic 101. So, ay, daanan ko na lang ng mabilis para ma, mas ma-absorb natin, ano? <clears throat> Any question so far? So basically, we learned about logic one one, and we study logic is because we want the truth. You know, we need the truth, and truth has implications. Truth changes lives. For good or it destroys lives. Truth determines action. If then, if A is true, then B is also true. That's what we try to understand through logic. We use premises to arrive at a conclusion. Logic is basically the study of the rules of argument and reasoning. And it's the tool that we to create good arguments. A logically valid argument means that the conclusion follows from the premises. All the premises are true and it's valid. An argument is a set of statements that serve as a pre as premises leading to a conclusion. So the argument is just basically how you reason. Argument is making claims or premises to support claims with evidence and make a conclusion. Proposition is a statement that you're trying to claim about truth, a statement or a claim about reality. And in philosophy, a proposition is any statement or affirmation or denial about something or a claim that is something, something is true or something is false. We use this book by Graham Priest from Oxford. We learned about validity, what follows as good reason for what. We learned about inferences. Premises are before the so, conclusions after the so or after therefore. Some more valid if the conclusion follows from the premises. It's deductively valid, you can be sure. Na kung true ang premises, true din dapat ang conclusion. Inductively valid, you can't be completely sure. It's not completely conclusive. Pero likely, possible. And it's invalid if there is no reason for conclusion to be true. Just because of the premises. We also learned about disjuncts and conjuncts. Disjunctions are or, conjunctions, and. Okay, for disjunctions, dapat uh, isa lang sa it's true. It's already true. The statement is already true. Pag conjunctions, dapat lahat, lahat ng conjuncts mo. True for it to be true. For names and quantifiers, man, names are true. I uh, masasabi mo a statement is true kung my name na the the predicate. Describes the subject. Talagang may property yung subject na yun na inassign mo in that situation. Quantifiers naman, may ibang rules. And you can contradict yourself or be contrary to yourself based on how you construct the sentence. And masasabi mong contradictory if yung isa universal, yung isa particular. Okay? And they against each other. Contrary, both of them universal. Thank you guys for listening. I hope na you learned something. And we can apply logic in our exegesis and in how we uh, interact day by day. Yes. So I love what Carl says here from Pastor Dan Hope. Argumentation is not about winning. Okay? It's not primarily about winning. It's about searching for the truth. Ano ba ang tama? Minsan hindi na importante kung sino ang tama. Ang importante mga kapatid, ano ang tama? So yun lang. <laughs> so guys, uh, thank you so much. Uh, I'd like to hear from you din anong mga na-realize ninyo uh, as we were uh, discussing. I hope now we can really pursue the truth more vigorously and more, you know, more, mas ano tayo, mas arrange, mas, uh, 
maganda yung pag-articulate natin sa mga thoughts natin as we have studied this. So let's hear from Pastor Dan Hope who is studying Masters in Philosophy sa Cagayan. Pastor Dan Hope, can you share to us what are your reflections while listening to this logic set? Uh, Nadi ko sa Davao karon, Nadi ko sa Cagayan. So my statement is false. Amazing. Let's apply. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think uh, ako ang yung ako ang reflection tonight is that we have to improve our English. Actually, ako reader jiko sa una pero karon kay murag since college at tungod sa internet kay murag di na bitaw kayo ko read. So it is a challenge for me as well nga mag-read kasi the more we read, the more nga naturally mugawas nga sakto ito ang paggamit bitaw sa or, and, but, ano. And also, uh, logic is interesting kasi uh, we can apply it sa tanan na to nga life ba? Ay, tanan part sa to ang life. Sa conversations and I don't know why God is God has put me here baka na mag-learn with ako gingani kasi wala jud wala jud na og think na I will dive in into this kasi you know always na ko ginaingnan si Donut na wala so weird so na sila eh I, I don't wanna associate myself with you weird people right something ana ba kay murag ala as in amaze na jud ko nang ako dere ay oh my ha and also kanang I want to, I'm planning to read the book, Bitaw. I'm planning to read the book. Um, nga mag-goal ko nga. Kasi short sure, naman ka to Obed. Char, murajud ko og. Super, murajud, super short. Murajud ko og walay basa ho nun no, sa koan sa ko ang pag-eskwela. Pero hopefully Pero you ako, need that sa law. You need yeah, that sa law. Yeah. Okay. Super. Kasi, you know what? Sa law, dili siya nga dili siya mo stick lang dito sa kung sa ang makita ni mo, di ba? Before ka mag-conclude sometimes, yun gali sila, kung nakalimot ka sa, sa law, ayaw, be kuan, be, be, si tao ganyo. Kanang, kung sa ang morally right, kung sa ang logically right, ano, maroon na imuang i-prove lang sa ila, ha? sa imuang reason, sa imuang reasoning ba? So it's really helpful. And sige kay, Um, I'm really, ganang, gusto ko, isa, uh, recently, magod kayo, nag workout ko, tapos naga naga limpyo dito ko sa ako ang place, I keep my place, um, koan, ganang, wait lang ha, I keep my place na clean, ana. so, and ako, I also keep my work, like, may mo kong active sa ko ang work and may mo na ko akong work jud na na kinang nanduat so ko ano ko nang kanang i want also to make it um goal na makabasa ko og libro makahuman ko og libro ana kasi isa jud na siya sa ako ang mga kulang paron thank you guys i'm so blessed to be here Do dili na ko mag-active kayo sa group chat. I'm so sorry. I just can't keep up with all my responsibilities. Thank you. Uh, no worries, Kay. We are all busy. As I said, no. We are all busy. Yeah. Si Ate Clan Kay to or si Ben Kay. Oh. That's obviously not done hope, bro. Oh, Tama no. is male. Mo di ay. Yun. Ate Glen K. Premise one. Glen K is a girl. <laughs> Joke lang. Walang na. Sakit na sa ulo. Okay. Sige, ikaw, Alexis. Any any thoughts? As a new <laughs> new member of BTM, grabe naka-active. What's up? Any, what's up? Any more thoughts sa uh, atong session tonight? 